Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. So we're going to channel your inner child today, but that's me at almost seven. Um, what did you want to be when you were about seven years old? What did you want to grow up to be? Just shout some answers. A dancer. Firefighter. Firefighter. Scientist. Comedian, pilot, a movie star, gainfully employed, super hot, all those things, great choices we all wanted to be. Well, I want to channel our inner child today because so much of what I've learned in about 20 years of marketing and stage comedy and improv specifically, as well as some stand-up, is that it's about playfulness. So I'm going to talk just a little bit setting that up and then you guys are going to play. Sound good? Yeah, right, one more time, one more time. Yeah, yeah. all right, now I, now I believe you, all right. And your inner child is very smart and knows, there we go. Um, mashups, somebody talked about it earlier this morning. Why, why Batman and, and Hot Wheels? Well, because kids are great at convergent and divergent thinking, taking two things that look dissimilar on the surface and finding a way to stick them together and, and come up with something new and then add on to that and pile on and pretty soon they've got a solar panel and a Barbie doll and a, you know, some other concoction with Legos that they've made and they're playing with it. So we're going to do that. It's been covered. I'm not going to go into too much detail. Humor disrupts patterns. It disrupts expectations. That's why it's so, so important. There's just too much coming at us every day. Gosh, this clicker is very picky. So comedy takes us to unexpected places. That's what it does for us. And that's a great thing because we need to grab, we're, we're competing with so much that's fighting for the attention of our audience. So I think safe is the new risky today. People say, isn't humor risky? Well, you know, everything is risky today. You coming here was risky. You getting in the cab, if you had a harrowing cab ride this morning, it was risky. So I think safe is the new risky. So there's a lot of things I could talk to you under the marketing umbrella and comedy umbrella, but I'm going to focus on three things today. Because kids are awesome at these three things, and they are the heart and soul of improv comedy, folks. We're going to talk about exaggeration. We're going to talk about contrast and the, the kindred cousin of, of mashups and status shifts, which is something really important in play and also in improv. So comedy is the truth on steroids. It's the truth on steroids. Somebody said it this morning, it's the truth. It's all about the truth. That's exactly what it is. And kids are really good at that. You can't make some of this stuff up. So what you're doing is you're taking something over the top. There's a saying that, that comedy is tragedy plus time. But it's anything. It's not just pain. It's any emotion can be ratcheted over the top. Somebody alluded earlier to the mayhem ads for State Farm. That is such a great ad, right? That guy that personifies all the things that we worry about could happen to us, because it could actually happen. So when you actually show that and take it over the top of these crazy situations, you're saying to your audience, I have empathy for you. I get it. You're worried about this stuff. So let's laugh together. And by laughing together, we're going to start a conversation. And kids are incredibly great at this. So. Here's what we're going to do. The first activity, it's your turn. You are going to come up with other uses for your smartphone. So I want you to take your smartphone, but it's not a smartphone in this instance. It's going to be something else. So you might look at it and go, oh, it's a solar panel for my hair. Oh, it's a battery pack for the robot husband or wife that I may or may not be building in my basement. I don't know. Right? You're going to spend 30 seconds Look at your smartphone device, come up with as many different things that it could be used for as possible. You just go ahead and play. Time. I know. You can come up with a lot of stuff. Now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to introduce you to a concept called Yes And, which is the cornerstone. It's the heart and soul, everybody. It's the trade secret of improv. How many of you are familiar with it? Fabulous. All right. Do we need to demonstrate how it works for those of you who don't, or you think enough of you have it? You got it? Maybe we'll do a quick demonstration. So, 
Yes and is a way to exaggerate. It's a way to heighten. It's a tool that you can use back at the ranch. So that's the metaphor I'm using for work. Back at the ranch, you can use this to heighten things. And the comedy will unfold. The funny will come out of it. So I want you to turn to your neighbor, or you can do it as a threesome, because we don't, do, we don't judge here. Um, I want you to take something very quickly on your list. Pick one thing. And then you're going to yes and each other and come up with some crazy. So you're going to pick one thing that you came up with as a starting point. May I have a volunteer to demonstrate really quickly how that might work? Somebody, who wants to play with me? Sure. All right, yeah, all right. All right, wonderful. So what was one thing you came up with for? My, my instrument is a mind reader, and I hold it up to your head, I know exactly what you're thinking about me. Yes, and I'm going to put a solar panel on top of it. Yes. That's awesome, and then I'm going to put a Barbie doll house on top of that. Yes, because then you can live on top of other people's assumptions about you. Awesome. <laughs> that is it, my friend. So here's what I want you to do. Turn to your neighbor. You're going to yes and each other. Start with one thing, and you're just going to add on top. No buts, only in the chairs. Go ahead and play. crazy that they ended up with? What did you build? Can I, I'll take a couple of volunteers. So we need, the, we need the ball. We need the ball over here. We got the ball. Who's got the ball? Somebody drop the ball. All right. Oh, go ahead. Okay, where'd you, where'd you end up? Where'd you end up? Awesome, I love it. Play Start with where you ended up, just for the interest of time. Thank you. Yeah. So I started out with um, a shoulder pad that shoots lasers, and we decided that we're going to have a parrot, and it was going to end up that we live on a pirate ship, and we can go undercover as pirates and shoot lasers with my parrot and my shoulder pad and have my own movie section. That is super awesome. I want to go to there. OK, that is That's super fantastic. awesome. fantastic. All right. Way to go. Um, we'll take one more, maybe just one more. All wait, right. wait, wait for it. I'm gonna stand up for this one. You ready? Okay. I was a pirate and I threw a catch box. Uh, we started with a mirror and we ended up with an app that judges you but only tells you the things you wanna hear. Love it! Love it. <laughs> Here's the, that's fantastic. All right, gold stars for all of you. Here's the funny thing about yes and, is that yes and, you will heighten and you will go to a crazy place. And a lot of those ideas won't be viable. But here's the thing, some of them will be. By using yes and to heighten and exaggerate and uncover the funny, you will come up with some things that have a kernel of viability for you to later explore. Yes and, folks, is like a date. You know, it doesn't mean you're going to marry the idea. You're not putting a ring on the finger of the idea. You're just taking it out for a few drinks. It's just a way to say, let's explore together. So that's a great tool for you to use. The second thing I want to talk about today is contrast. Humor loves incongruities. Contrast is funny. We love it. Our brains don't know what to do with it. Remember that commercial with uh, Malcolm McDowell and, and uh, James Earl Jones reading the, the, in, in Sprint, reading those texts from teenage girls? Totes my goats. Oh my god. Hysterical. Very funny. The, or the Betty White, where she's the, uh, um, the hungry football player and she tackles somebody on the field for the Snickers ad. It doesn't go together. That's exactly why it works. So our brains like mashups. Or you could take things that seemingly don't go together and put them together. So you know, we live in the Bay Area where pet parties are very, very popular. And my dog gets more birthday invites than me or my child do. <laughs> uh, only in San Francisco. If you work for Lyft, what would happen if you took that service and mashed it up with some pet stuff? Or maybe a Match.com, you had a Match.com for pets. And Lyft arranged the transportation. That's crazy. That's San Francisco. Some of that may be viable. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a minute, and I want you 
to come up with, you have, a, you have an option here, I'm gonna give you a little menu option. Take your company's main product or service, change the historical context for discussion. Either put it in the past or project it into the future, what would people do with that product? Or you can do a mashup. Take something that's not really related to your business and see if you could integrate that into some kind of common product. So, all right, everybody, you got a minute? Go play and have some fun. We're in the knee business. Okay, everybody, clap if you can hear me. Clap if you can hear. All right. All right. You can explore more of that back at the ranch. That's our metaphor. Uh, so can we get a couple of examples of anybody want to share what you ended up with? You're all brilliant. Come on. Who wants to share? Nobody wants to share? Yeah, this lovely lady right here. Thank you. Um, so we're in consultancy, so you know the answer is to make company the companies we work for more successful and make more money. Yes. Um, so how about we turn that on its head and do the opposite and make it a disaster so that all those truly unhappy people have to leave the company and start their own businesses, <laughs> and we'll start a hundred successful companies instead of one successful. I like it. That's a great. That's a great starting point of an idea. Absolutely. Absolutely. Take this exercise with you when you leave here today. There's a lot of great things you can do with it, with contrasts and mashups. You'll uncover a lot of fun. I want to talk about the third thing today, um, and that is, that's a great um, screen capture from a, a, a song called Girl in a Country Song. Anybody familiar with it? And the whole concept is a role reversal if men and women switched. So in the world of improv um, that I live and breathe in a lot is this concept of status and status shifts. Think about what kids do. Kids are very fluid with status, and status comes and goes. It's endowed, it's taken. It's a very fluid concept. One minute your kid's a robber, the next they're a cop, retrofitted with a camera because we gotta keep up with the times, apparently. And here's the thing, it just comes and goes, kids don't question it. In an, in an improv show, for example, you might watch what's called a long form piece, a 30 minute play. By the end of that, we want an arc. We want to see that one person or maybe more has changed. We want to see maybe the mother and the father switch roles. Maybe a child is elevated and, be, and takes on the caregiving role of the parent. We want to see that the, the person who's in a position of power has been lowered in status, and the person who's the underdog becomes the hero. We want to elevate that status. So status becomes very important. Now, before it's your turn, here I want to give you some ideas on what could be done with status. There is nothing funnier than talking to kids, because kids can't lie, and they will not let you get away with jargon bullshit. They will not. I have an almost seven-year-old son, and let me tell you, what, what, what was that word, Mom? What did you just say? So you want to do something funny? Go talk to some highfalutin experts about your value proposition. What do you think we do? What's our cloud computing thing all about? Thou, then go interview a bunch of seven-year-old kids. Let me tell you something. The kids will be smarter, funnier, get it right, and they will be, they will be a lot less complex than so-called so experts. Do, turn it into a video. Stick it on your website. Comedy gold. Have your customers come in for an hour. Make them the board. Give them lunch. Ask them, what would you do? If you were the board running our company, what changes would you make? We did that with some millennials at a bank recently, and it was hysterical, because millennials had a lot of ideas that a lot of the older baby boomers just would never entertain, and that was pretty darn funny. Have executives switch places with admins. So make it like an undercover boss, but on steroids. Completely take it over the top. You're gonna uncover a lot of funny playfully. So what I want you to do is I want you to take a minute, your turn, and I want you to sort of play with this idea of status. What could you do? Maybe a video, some content, something that would play with the notion of status. Again, f comedy flips expectations. What could you do? Have some fun for a minute. Go. if you can hear me. All right. 
Does anybody want to share? Did you come up with any ideas or scenarios that would kind of arc your storytelling for your company? Yeah, this lovely lady right here. Thank you. You don't need no stinking ball. That's all right. <laughs> uh, so my company's main product is voiceovers. So um, I thought about taking my son, and he could be in the studio talking about uh, what his royalties are, if, what the copyright usage is, if his agent is involved. Um, you know, the temperature of his water isn't right, yeah. and all the things that uh, my voice actors get concerned with when recording. That sounds like fun. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. Kids are great. Kids are great. Sometimes they're a little hard to wrangle for videos, but you know, hurting cats, hurting cats. <laughs> Anybody else have an idea on status? Play with it. Yeah, Yael. Actually, do it in companies too, and I always make people switch roles. The men have to follow, and the women have to lead. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Anytime you can get people to switch roles, you're not only that, but you're, you're, you are teaching people about empathy. There's really nothing like stepping literally into somebody else's shoes. And I think it's an exercise that we don't do enough, but I think when you think about what comedy is and play is and how when you flip expectations, anytime you get a chance to turn expectations upside down, that's where the humor is, folks. So play with this concept of status because it's, it's very important. So I can say a lot of things, but I'm just going to say play. Unleash your inner child. Your inner child is smart. He or she knows so many great things, but we've forgotten how to play. I'm guaranteeing you, if you let your inner child play, you're going to have more business meetings that look like the second one here with the kids than that first business meeting, because God knows we can't get our time back from those meetings that suck us. But you're going to innovate great products. You're going to come up with ideas for content. You're going to come up with ideas for better stories and campaigns by using these tools. By exaggeration, use yes and, put things to another use. Contrast, look at the incongruities, mashups of two seemingly dissimilar ideas and look for the congruence. And status, playing with status completely plays with their notions of expectations and that's exactly the point. So go back to the ranch, play with these things. Um, this is my almost seven year old. Um, and I feel like when I left high tech and started my own company, I started a journey which was to finally become the adult that my inner child would approve of and actually uh, acknowledge in public. <laughs> and I think most days I'm hitting it, and today was a really good day because I got to play with all of you. So thank you. <laughs> Questions, anybody? Or am I just like one speaker in between you and lunch? That's kind of the... <laughs> All right. Well, if you have any qu don't have any questions, I need one. I need at least one. It's going to make me feel better. No? Nobody has any questions? All right. All right. Yes. This lovely lady again. Thank you. So actually, I had been doing, I'd been living very parallel lives, but I was fragmented. So for the last 20 years, not only was I working in high-tech marketing, I was running high-tech marketing um, divisions, but I also had been doing comedy. So I, I had been doing comedy all along, and every time I would try to integrate comedy into my work, um, the powers that be in, it, would say, well, we can't do that. We just can't, that, we just can't do that. We're a serious brand. I'm like, no one's reading your stuff. Trust me, it can't get worse. If you fail with comedy, because no one's really reading it now. And what I found was that, when you actually have to make the case over and over again to treat your customers like people, that's not the right place for me. So after you know, about 15 years of that, the big impetus for me was you know, having my son, and you know, I felt like there was a better way. And I felt like I didn't want to do it, but I was, my division was creating marketing that nobody would read. I mean, if, if we packaged this stuff and sold it to the CIA, I'm pretty sure it would qualify as human torture. Um, if somebody read it, if we've tied somebody to a chair and made it read it. And so for me, it's just I needed to integrate my, my comedy and my improv background because there's a lot of powerful tools and merge that with my sensibility. So for me, that's sort of where it came to. Yes. Thank you. All right, everybody.